Hi, this is Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor at Grace Lutheran in New Albany, Indiana. And this is Daily Devotion for Friday the 15th of May, 2020. Our theme for today is, Here is Your Mother. And the reading is from John 19, starting at verse 25. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and this, this, the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. So far the reading. With this past Sunday having been Mother's Day, couldn't help but think about my own mother. Mom's been gone now a little over four years, and obviously I miss her a great deal. Um, she was always the source of all my information. I would call her and she would tell me what was happening with friends and relatives in Richville and in Frankenmuth and in Vassar and in Reese. And she had all that information and so kept me up to date. And she was always a good listener. I could tell her my exploits or my disappointments and she was always good at listening. She was also a very good audience. Um, was well, not hard for me to make mom laugh. I could tell her a little joke or a little aside and, and I would get laughed out of her. And so I miss that. In fact, the uh, last time I talked to her, the day before she passed away, she was not doing well and we were talking and she was struggling, but I, uh, I managed to get her to laugh there. And, and that little laugh will, is one that I treasure. And I'll treasure that until the day that she and I get to stand before the throne and celebrate life in Christ together. Um, I made mom laugh a lot, but to my knowledge, I only made the woman cry one time. Now see, my mom was a, uh, she was a tough German farm woman, and uh, she was not one given to wild swings of emotion. Um, I don't, I never saw her cry until the day that Becky and I came back from Evansville, Indiana. Uh, I had received a call to be the principal there at Trinity in Darmstadt, and we had gone to visit, and Mom and Dad had come down to babysit. And when we got back on that Sunday afternoon, and we walked into the living room, Mom was sitting there, and she said, well, and Becky said, he's taking the call. And I saw my mom's eyes well up with tears. Now, that's the first and only time I ever saw that and I hardly knew what to make of it. Um, I hated it being the source of that and uh, being the cause of those tears, but I also understood it because for six years we'd only been about an hour and a half away from home so we could be there any time and now we were going to go to the far corner of Indiana and it seemed like the other side of the moon to mom. Add to that that we were taking three of her five grandchildren that she had at the time, and we were taking them away down into that corner of Indiana too, a long way from home and from grandma. She really didn't want me to go. Imagine Mary's grief in our text for today. There she is at the foot of that cross, and she's seeing her firstborn son, this brilliant, spiritual, wise, compassionate, miraculous, gracious, caring, godly man who did so much for so many people. And he's hanging there on that cross, a condemned criminal and naked to the world. This is the one who had been announced to her by an angel, had been visited by wide-eyed shepherds who had been worshipped by magi who came from afar. This one who had been hailed by thousands as a miracle man, who had been serenaded by hundreds when he rode into Jerusalem just a week earlier, and who was believed by some to be the Messiah that the prophets of old had been prophesying for a long time. And now he hung in agony, tortured and berated by Jew and by Gentile alike. Imagine Mary's grief to see all of her plans, all of her hopes, all of her dreams dying with Jesus on that Roman cross, she really didn't want him to go. But there, in the midst of her heartache, 
her grief consuming every thought, she heard the voice of this one she loved. He spoke. He spoke to her. In the midst of his agony and his travail, he summoned the strength to say to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And she followed his eyes as he looked at John. And then she heard him speak to John, Here is your mother. Even as he perishes, he cares about his mother's welfare. He knows that his own brothers are not yet believers. He knows that during the next couple of days, Mary's going to need care and protection. He knows that he himself is never again going to be there physically to put his arms around her or to help her. Her tears move him to sorrow, to love, and to compassion. He doesn't want to leave her all alone. This is one of those moments that's really important for us. It shows us the human heart of Jesus. He's the Son of God. He's willingly obeying the Father's will. And he understands the cosmic importance of the sacrifice that he's making. He's the Creator, giving his all for his creatures. But he's also a man who loves his mother. He is a son who wants her to be comforted and to be cared for. He is true man and true God both at the same time. While he suffers the condemnation of God for our sins, he yet sees and understands the fulfillment of old Simeon's prophecy. When Jesus was presented at the temple, Simeon picked up the baby Jesus and he sang his song. And at the end of it, he said, and a sword shall pierce your own soul too. Mary was feeling the pain of that. And in the thrall of his own pain, Jesus seeks to alleviate hers, as any worthy son would do. The day I saw my mom cry has always stuck with me, since it was the one and only time that I saw the woman shed tears. I understood the depth of it. I hated being the cause of that pain, but I felt strongly that God was leading me to Indiana. And all I could do is promise that we would do our best to come home and visit. And and in the end, she came to realize that this was part of God's plan and that he had a purpose in sending me first to Evansville and from there uh, to Fort Wayne and from Fort Wayne down here to New Albany. She understood that and her sorrow and her tears were replaced by blessings and by joy. Mary also knew blessings and joy sooner than she might have thought when she was kneeling at the foot of that cross when she held her dead son Jesus in her arms. When Easter came and the reports began to come in, reports that came in first from the other women and then from the apostles themselves that they had seen Jesus and that he was alive. Well, when she began to receive those reports, then her sorrow and her tears were replaced by wonder and by joy. Gone was her sorrow, replaced by hope and by faith. Her son was alive. And he lives to this day, and so does Mary, and so will we. The sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, the sacrifice that Mary had to give while she stood helplessly at the foot of that cross, it was all part of God's plan. It was all God's way of bringing to fruition all that he had promised from way long ago. And Mary saw that she had been a part of that, and she lived long enough to have the joy that this son of hers, this Jesus, really and truly was the son of God and the Messiah long promised. He's risen, he's risen indeed, and we sing Alleluia and amen. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you gave your son to Mary and that she loved him and she cared for him. And Father, we give you thanks that even as she knelt at that cross, Jesus already was fulfilling all that had been promised by the prophets and that in his sacrifice, he was making it possible for Mary to be part of your family, for us to be part of your family. We pray, Father, that you'd help us to stay in that faith, that we might always trust in the one that you sent and that we might continue to be your people in this world. We ask, Father, that you'd bless and be with Lee Kelly, that you'd be with Serene Lopna, both of them have been hospitalized, we pray, Father, that you'd bless and watch over Jim Ferber as he undergoes pre-surgery testing next week 
and we pray that they'll be able to do the surgery he needs the following week. For all those that are ill, those all those that are struggling with cancer, all those that we know and list up before you in our own hearts, we pray, Father, that you grant them your help and your peace. Be with us and our loved ones and keep us all in your hand. And we ask these things through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, just a couple of announcements. Join us tomorrow morning for the Saturday, the weekly review. And then on Sunday, we're actually going to have some live, real people in church this Sunday, I guess. I don't know how many, but uh, we will have the doors open. We'll do everything we can to, to keep people separated from each other. Uh, we're encouraging you to wear masks. We're not requiring it, but we're encouraging you. If you're not wearing a mask, then by all means, make sure you maintain your social distancing. And uh, we'll have communion in both services. And, and again, that's going to be a continuous line communion, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure we're sanitized. Um, but if you're not comfortable with that yet, if you're not ready for this yet, if you still have health concerns that, that keep you away, by all means, we'll still be online, and we invite you to be there on Sunday morning, both at 8 and 1030. Both services will be, um, will be online, and so we'll do it that way. Um, let's see, confirmands, we've got a meeting tonight, 7 o'clock on a Zoom meeting. We'll see you and your parents with us at 7. And then this coming Wednesday and Saturday next week, we'll have practices for Confessional Sunday and the two services next week. And I want to give a little shout out to some of our shut-ins that we haven't seen in quite a while. They may not hear this, but maybe you know them and are in contact. And you can tell them that Pastor and Woods and Pastor Kishnick miss them all. And so a little shout out to Luella Aker, to Norma Hanchel and Susie Davis, to Dennis Hawkins and Sammy Day, to Walter Brinkman and Jim Baumgart, and to Helen Kurtz. We pray that the Lord would continue to bless and keep you all, and we look forward to the day when we can once again safely come and visit you. So God's blessings. We'll see you tomorrow morning for the review, and then we'll see some of you in church, and the rest of you will be online this coming Sunday. God be with you all. Bye-bye.